Laptops and computers, they've all been around long enough that it seems like everyone has that laptop their dad bought 10 years ago that you haven't probably used in the last four years because it's so slow and old and maybe it's not even on Windows 10, maybe it's still on Windows 7, which it's actually end of life now and you technically shouldn't be using. And you probably just have it sitting around. You don't know what you're supposed to do with it. Maybe you thought about recycling it. I'm here to tell you there are better options. I recently took a 10 year old laptop that I used to use back when I was, I think a freshman in high school maybe. And I turned it into a sort of little gaming PC by installing on it Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution. And if you've ever heard the term Linux thrown around, it's an operating system. It's just like Windows or Mac, it's Linux. And Ubuntu is probably the best Linux distribution you can get because there's tons of different Linux versions and Ubuntu is just one of them. And they're all available for free, at least as far as I know. Maybe there's some smaller distributions that you do have to pay money for, but Ubuntu is kind of the primary real big one that if you look into different versions of Linux to get, that's the one that seems like it has the best amount of support, compatibility, and overall is pretty user-friendly. Sure, there's some more watered-down ones that are even more user-friendly, but in terms of getting good features and good usability for just the general populace that isn't familiar with Linux at all, Ubuntu is the way to go, and it's pretty easy to install. You simply go on their website, I'll have a link for it down in the description, you download an ISO file, you burn that to either a CD or put it on a USB drive, and then you just restart your computer, and it will prompt you to install Ubuntu, and it will erase everything that's currently on your Windows hard drive. So obviously, you wanna back up your hard drive before this, and probably watch tutorial to walk through this in a little bit more detail than my 30 second explanation, but that's how easy it is to get yourself off of Windows and onto Ubuntu. And the reason why you'd want to do this is because it runs so much better, even on old hardware. So my laptop has an AMD A8 processor. It's about 10 years old. It's just a basic HP laptop, nothing fancy. And it was an okay speed laptop back when it was on Windows 8, which is what it came with when I bought it originally from Best Buy. But then I upgraded to Windows 10, and it's just kind of just slowed down over the years. So reinstalling it with a new operating system like Ubuntu Linux gave it a new, just fresh lease on life. All of a sudden the thing runs faster, turns on faster, it does everything faster. Now, the problem is if this is your primary computer and you haven't bought a newer Windows computer, you will want to obviously, like I said, back up all your files, but recognize the fact that many Windows programs are not compatible with Linux. Now, there's ways you can get a lot of Windows programs to run on Linux. There's things like Wine, which is a program for Linux that can help you get those Windows programs running, but you should just assume that none of the programs that you currently use will necessarily work on Ubuntu Linux. Now, there's an entire app store on Ubuntu where you can find different programs, download them, and add them. It's really slick. And then, of course, you can also go out on the web and find programs like I did when I got into some of the more gaming-oriented stuff. So RetroArch is on the store. You can just download that straight away. If you wanna play some of the older classics, I'm talking NES, SNES, Game Boy, and there's standalone Game Boy emulators, and many other systems have standalone emulators as well. Dolphin, the GameCube emulator, if you wanna try out some GameCube games on your computer, that's available. However, a lot of these lower end systems, you're probably not gonna get the GameCube to run great, and I didn't either. It was running at like 15 or 20 frames per second. It wasn't playable. Ultimately, Dolphin was not something I could use on my 10 year old computer, but impressively enough, I could play Dreamcast games, in fact, a wide variety of Dreamcast games at a solid 30 frames or 60 frames per second without you know that same sort of weird stuttering that I was getting on GameCube or those slowdowns. It was smooth using the ReDream emulator, which is Linux compatible, and I just had to go out to the ReDream website and download that as it wasn't included on the store, but it was easy enough to install. I think oftentimes when people think of Linux, they think, well, if you install a program, it's really complicated to install. It was not complicated to install ReDream, and some programs for Linux are easier to install than others. 
And while I think it's often best to just stick with emulating old consoles when it comes to playing them on old computers, if you want to get into playing some older actual computer games that aren't you know designed for an SNES but is actually a computer game that maybe is you know 10, 20 years old, you can do that on this as well because Steam has a significant amount of compatibility that has been developed for Linux, Linux Ubuntu, thanks to the Proton project, which is basically Steam official attempt to make many Windows games be compatible with Linux. So oftentimes many mainstream titles will get a Windows release, maybe a Mac release, but rarely a Linux release, particularly for the older titles you actually want to be able to run on an old computer. So the Proton project has been a Steam's attempt to make many of the Windows versions of those games be playable on Linux. And you can actually take a look at the Proton website that I'll have linked down in the description, and it will give you a very good idea of what sort of compatibility you can anticipate for your favorite games. So if there's any games from like the early 2000s that you think you might be able to run on your old computer, it might be possible. However, if there's you know a console version for say the Dreamcast or the SNES or some of these older RPGs or the Game Boy, I would just recommend just going that way rather than trying to mess around with actually getting a PC version of a game to work on Linux. But I will tell you, for many games it is possible thanks to Proton, which you just install the Steam client straight away and then you enable Proton in the settings it was very easy. I didn't have much difficulty doing it, but this is a huge improvement not only from a gaming standpoint, but I used to when I would very rarely use this laptop because it's the only laptop I still have. I use a desktop these days. When I would very rarely turn on my laptop and I'd want to even go browse the internet, look at YouTube, just getting Chrome or I ended up using Brave, which is a different web browser that I use now instead of Chrome, to run on my Windows 10 laptop was very slow, but when I switched that same laptop over to Ubuntu, it seems like web pages load so much faster and I, it opens faster. I just have a much better user experience overall and since it didn't cost me a penny to get this up and running and I took a laptop that had been sitting collecting dust because it was so slow and now have it being very usable instead of having to buy a new laptop for the little that I use laptops as opposed to my desktop I think that it's a great thing to take the time to set up I mean in just a matter of a few hours assuming you don't have a ton of data to back up manually off this laptop you can get your system moved over to Linux Ubuntu and get and just a much better user experience with tons of free updates coming in the future. In fact, if you download the LTS, the long-term support version of the operating system, you're guaranteed to be current until 2025, at which time you can obviously update again for free. This is a free project. Linux as a whole is a free operating system. They're never going to charge you for this. And I think that it's a great thing to have available to the people who want to turn an old system into something that can still run quickly. I wouldn't necessarily take a new system off the shelf and put Ubuntu on it, but I think that for these older systems that are really just you know struggling to run Windows 10 these days, then using some sort of Linux-based operating system like Ubuntu is a better option. Now there are different ones that people may recommend. I know oftentimes on Reddit, Pop OS is one that comes up as being recommended. I'm gonna link that down in the description too if you wanna check it out. That one's a little bit more even gaming oriented and does come with some of these gaming things set up right out of the box in that version of Linux. Now, Pop OS didn't install successfully for me on my laptop, I kept running into some sort of error and I thought, you know what, instead of trying to sort out these errors, I'll just install Ubuntu because Ubuntu is gonna be the one that is by far the most popular and because of that has a significant amount of different help threads out there online so that you can actually get the help you need if you would encounter any of these sorts of errors. Now, I probably could have found some help for Pop! OS too. I just didn't want to take the time to figure it out and just went back to Ubuntu because it's kind of the bread and butter of Linux it seems like because it's so popular. So it's definitely the one that I and I think a lot of people would recommend if you don't want to just kind of play around, try out different versions, just go straight to the one that's kind of deemed to be the best. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey. I'll see you in the next video.